All right. Everybody got one? Yeah. All right. Well, since I've worked at a grocery store for about five years, I chose to do uh, grocery bagging. Um, I've trained numerous new employees, I've trained managers and everything, but this is the basic fundamentals that most even managers can't even get, right? Um, but your uh, procedure for bagging the groceries properly, first you're going to ask the customer, at where I work at Rogers, you, we have paper and plastic bags, some places just have plastic, so um, we have to ask the customers if they want paper or plastic bags. Um, and then when they tell you, then you proceed to open that bag, we use a two piece underneath. So say for instance, uh, they want paper, so you're going to pop the bag open, and then you get a little straight in for the plastic bag to and that's like convenient, so you can just pull the grocery and slide right into the bag. And then as the cashier is running the items through, um, they're going to be coming down the belt. And you're going to want to set aside items uh, such as cleaning agents, um, any uh, non-food items, or bread or produce. And there's like an L shape to uh, most um, checkouts where the bagger's at. And you can set like the breads aside so that uh, the cans and heavier stuff mm -hmm. pop. That's the worst thing. Cashiers like are more focused on scanning the items, so they don't really watch. Like they put a 24 pack of water down, and then the next thing you know, your bread is. But uh, yeah. So once you get that stuff set aside, you want to first start with your uh, heavier grocery, like dry foods, um, on the bottom. So say you got the canned goods coming down, you want to put the canned goods on the bottom, uh, like the base of the bag. And you don't want to like lay boxes or anything like this sideways and put cans on it because then you can risk crushing the boxes and stuff. But, uh, you can set those up sideways. I'm not really to show this, but I'm just like in the layer. Here's like a layer. Put a layer of cans in the bottom. And then if you have like other boxes and stuff, you can either set them, like if you have a whole layer of cans, you can set them on top or on the side, which I don't have enough here to make the whole layer on the bottom, but you can set those off to the side. These are the boxes. All right. And then like two layers of pop. Um, they try, because these bags, I believe, cost us like 30 cents a piece, so they want as much to go in them without making them too heavy, so they don't really break or anything. But they, I was told that if we have like two liters of pop, we're supposed to put two sideways and then stack one on top just to make sure you get as much in the bag as possible without making it too heavy. All right, and then once you start getting the stuff up, all right, we got another bag of stuff just to keep on the top of the hands. For all purposes, we'll just pretend this is a package of uh, ground beef because I didn't want to bring it in. Um, Alright, once you get this to this point, you have your bread that you have set aside. You can set that on top of any grocery items or any like cold items because if you have um, like all dairy stuff, you want to keep all your cold stuff together, especially in the summertime. People really want their cold stuff kept together or frozen stuff kept together. Um, but then another thing is people don't like it when you put um, produce on top of frozen stuff, even though you're supposed to put produce on top of everything in the bags, like uh, bananas and stuff. Um, that's not something that we were taught, but people just don't like it, I know that, over time. Um, but yeah, breads, rolls, chips, everything goes on top, um, and also produce. And then I have it starred there that breads can only go on top of breads, and produce can only go on top of produce. You never put anything else on top of bread. Even produce, you don't want to put on top of bread or bread on top of produce. Those are the only two items that can go on top of each other. Um, and then the meats. Let's just pretend this is uh, ground beef. Um, meats and chickens, you always want to keep meat separate. No, like, ground beef can go with ground beef and chicken can go with chicken, but you don't want to mix the two together. The only way you can do that is if you're using a paper bag, you put each of them in a plastic bag wrap them and then you can put them together in the same bag but never together unless they're wrapped. Uh.
And then if they're wrapped, we can go with other cold items. And there you see the frozen. Cold. And then also if there's smaller orders, you can put like frozen and other things together just to make it go together, but you want to keep it. If they're large, <coughs> larger uh, orders, you want to keep your uh, frozen separate from grocery because it just keeps everything cold together. And then the main thing is just to never allow an item to get crushed. If you can see, I mean, make your common sense judgment that something could get crushed if you put something too heavy on it, um, don't do it. Just build it up and it uh, should be good. But then, like this one, some people will try and put this meat and wrap it up and put it in this bag with this next to the bread or something. That's kind of frowned upon them because you're already using this bag. There's no need to put it in here, and you're not going to risk any of the juice or anything getting out. You just keep it in this bag. You're going to have to use the bag for it anyway. So you got your meat and you can step it like this. And